Here are the top stories for today, November 3, 2020. Navy ships and Air Force planes are being utilized to deliver relief aid in typhoon-hit provinces. Makabayan Bloc skipped today's Senate hearing on red tagging issue. Cash for Work program is set for tourism workers and tour guides. And let us take a look at Panawan Island's rich marine biodiversity. Good day, I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. Efforts are underway to restore telecommunication lines and electricity in Catanduanes. According to OCD Administrator Ricardo Halad, representatives of Globe and Smart are part of their disaster planning for Typhoon Naroli and they are already doing something about the immediate restoration of telco services in Catanduanes. 80% of electric posts, transformers, and other electric facilities in Catanduanes have been destroyed due to the typhoon. Department of Energy Under Secretary Felix Fuentabella assured that all energy-related assistance will be provided for Catanduanes province. Aside from telecommunication lines and electricity, Catanduanes Governor Joseph Kua also requested for drinking water as facilities of the water utilities were also destroyed by the typhoon. Presidential spokesperson Hari Roque in his press briefing asked Kua to list down all their urgent needs so that this could be loaded onto the C-130 plane that would ferry their requested supplies. Residents of Itogo and Benguet are temporarily barred from entering Baguio City effective today until November 15. The restriction was made following a surge in the number of COVID-19 cases in Itogon. Itogon was placed on the radar of the National Interagency Task Force Against COVID-19 when it started recording a surge in cases starting October 22. It first recorded the highest single-day record on October 30 with 66 cases. The town broke its own single-day record in November 1 when it logged 159 COVID-19 positive cases. Baguio City Mayor Benjamin Magalong said only authorized persons outside residence or APOR are allowed entry and exit to the city. Four of the Philippine Navy's largest ships are now reserved for relief operations. These are BRP Tarlac, BRP Davao del Sur, BRP Bacolod City and BRP Dagupan City. The Philippine Navy said these ships could basically serve as military sea lift and transport vessels and may act as floating command and control ships during times of humanitarian assistance and disaster response operations. The Philippine Air Force on Tuesday deployed transport aircraft to bring food packs and other relief supplies to areas in Legazpi City, Albay, and Vira Catanduanes that were affected by Super Typhoon Roli. Both aircraft took off past 7.30 a.m. and arrived at their respective destinations around 9 a.m. PAF spokesperson Lt. Col. Aristides Galang said, the cargo consisted of one communication van, a generator set, beds, tents, and boxes of personal protective equipment or PPE sets. Also airlifted were boxes of bottled water donated by Asia Brewery, which would be delivered to the most affected areas in the Bicol region. Meanwhile, over 200 boxes of food packs were delivered from the Department of Social Welfare and Development to Vira, Catanduanes. The Office of the Presidential Assistance for the Visayas commended those who have helped bring down COVID-19 cases in the Visayas, particularly Cebu, Negros Occidental, and the rest of Western Visayas. Presidential Assistant for the Visayas Secretary Michael Lloyd Dino cited the collaboration and cooperation among individuals, government agencies, and non-government organizations as having contributed to the campaign against COVID-19. He said it is through Major General Melquiades Feliciano that they are able to assist Bacolod and the rest of Western Visayas in healing together. Feliciano established the Emergency Operations Center for EOC in Cebu City, which provided a comprehensive and holistic approach to the health crisis. 
Dino also credited the Department of Health in Central Visayas for sharing their best practices. Dino is optimistic that the EOC formula being implemented in Bacolod and in other areas in Visayas will also help bring down cases. A COVID-19 emergency response loan worth 100 million US dollars have been entered into by the Philippines and South Korea. The Department of Finance of the Philippines signed the agreement with the Korean government on October 29 through the Export Import Bank of Korea or Korea Exim Bank. The loan program aims to provide immediate financing or budgetary support to the recipient country for economic policies or implementation of sector development plans. It also aims to further strengthen relations between Korea and the Philippines in the field of public health and safety, in addition to diverse areas of cooperation. The loan may take the form of an emergency relief fund for a pandemic situation like COVID-19. The Department of Education has adjusted its four quarters for school year 2020-2021 in response to the key challenges in teaching students during the pandemic. DepEd Undersecretary for Curriculum and Instruction, Jostado San Antonio, said there is a need to recalibrate the strategy of assigning teaching responsibilities of teachers and learning activities of the learners with the assistance of their parents. DepEd extended the first quarter of the school year up to December 12, 2020. The second quarter would start from January 4, 2021 to February 27, 2021. The third quarter is on March 1, 2021 to April 24, 2021. And fourth quarter is on April 26 to June 11, 2021. Still to come, Makabayan Bloc skipped today's Senate hearing on red tagging issue. And Cash for Work program is set for tourism workers and tour guides. More on these when the PNA Newsroom continues. Sa matinding laban natin sa Coronavirus Disease 2019, sugpoin din natin ang pagkalat ng fake news. Huwag magbahagi ng impormasyon na hindi tiyak ang pinagmulan. I-check mabuti ang source ng balita. Kumuha lamang ng impormasyon mula sa mga official channel ng Department of Health. Huwag magpadala sa maling balita. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa. Kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. You're still watching the PNA Newsroom. Members of the Makabayan were no-show in the Senate hearing on red tagging issue. Instead, they just sent a representative at the Senate. According to Senator Panfilo Lacson, head of the Senate Defense Committee, they extended their invitation to members of the progressive group. However, Colmenares requested for a later date and without the presence of Lieutenant General Antonio Parlade. For the record, aside from official notices delivered by the committee secretariat last October 30 to the different progressive militant groups, Bayan Muna, Alliance of Concerned Teachers, Kabataan, Gabriela, while properly received, did not confirm their attendance for still unknown reason until now. We also sent an open invitation last week to the representatives of the Makabayan Coalition ng Mamamayan or Makabayan Block of the House of Representatives to voluntarily attend this public hearing. We received a letter from former Congressman Neri Colminares requesting that another hearing be held so he may be given an opportunity to attend but without the presence of the members of the security sector, particularly Lieutenant General Parcade. The chair may have to discuss this with the members of the committee. I understand uh, Attorney Sarsa, Manika Sarsa, will, uh, will act as the legal counsel uh, for the Makabayan Black. 
The Senate investigation came after Parlade warned celebrities against Red Front groups such as Gabriela and Macabayan. For Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa, it is high time to call a spade a spade as he calls to protect countrymen from being recruited by communist terrorist groups. The issue of recruitment of minors as combatants by the communist terrorist groups is an age-old problem. There have been numerous reports in the past that claimed the CPP MPA terrorists deliberately recruit teenagers as their manpower for armed struggle against the government. And there are allegations that some partialist groups advocate communist ideologies. Mr. Chairman, it is about time we call spade a spade. Tama na ang limapung taong panluluko at panilin lang na ginagawa nitong teroristang grupong CPP, NPA, NDF sa ating mga kababayan. Sila ang hadlang sa pag-unlad ng ating bansa, lalong-lalo na sa kanayunan. They should complain against Juma Sison because in the first place, it was Juma Sison who red-tagged Bayan, KMU, KMP, Gabriela, Alayas of Concentrated Teachers, Legal, uh, LFS, Cadena, and others as major component organizations of the MDF. Also present during the hearing is a former NPA member who was sexually abused by her former commanders. Isa po ako sa buhay na patunay ng pangaabuso sa loob ng kilosan, not just once but thrice. In, no, no, mga kasama ninyo o ng mga opisyal? O, officer po, mga commander po namin. Eh, akala ko ba pinapatay yung ano, death penalty yung uh, mangre-re? Yun nga po yung masakit, Mr. Pre uh, Senate President. Kasi po, ang paniniwala ko din po nung una is ganun. Akala namin, uh, pinoprotektahan ng kilosan yung mga kabab kabataan, kababaihan, in terms of rights ng mga kababaihan, lalo sa violence. Pero, yun nga po masakit. Inilaan ko yung buhay ko sa loob ng kilosan. From 14 years old po ako. Tapos po, 18 na po nung nag-NPA. Doon ko po naranasan na yung uh, napagsamantalhan po nung CEO namin. 19 years old lang po ako nung panahon na yun. Naulit po yon nung ako ay 20 years old. Tapos po, nung hindi ko na po kinaya yung depression, dahil sa sunod-sunod na pangyayari na yon pinaratangan po ako na nababaliw. An army general is calling on Gabriela and Kabataan party list to extend help to an alleged rape victim of an NPA commander. The details from Sol Alarcon. Major General Pio Dinoso III, 8th ID commander of the Philippine Army, has called on all claiming to be women and children's rights advocates, particularly those in Congress, to help a former child warrior who was allegedly raped by an NPA commander. Major General Dinoso specifically mentioned the representatives of the Kabataan Party List and Gabriela. <laughs> ang kapatang party list representative, Congresswoman Pilado. Ang women's right party list ng Gabriela, representative Rosas, tulungan niyo po ang dalawang magkapakinato, si Shane at si Rupa, para makumit ang justisya. The call was made by the general following the filing of the formal complaint by Shane, the 17-year-old former child warrior at the Colombian Prosecutor's Office against the NPA commander, identified as Paterno Opo alias Dodong, who is reportedly operating in the hinterlands of Leyte and Biliran. Shane was only 15 years old when allegedly raped by the NPA commander. She, together with her elder sister Rufa, got their freedom from the hands of the New People's Army when they were rescued by the soldiers in Leyte on June 12, 2020. For the PNA Newsroom, Sol Alarcon, Philippine Information Agency, Region 8. The Department of Trade and Industry has further increased the operational capacity of business establishments and activities in areas under community quarantine or GCQ and modified GCQ. Business establishments and activities include testing, tutorial and review centers, gyms, fitness centers and sports facilities, internet shops, dermatological clinic, offering aesthetic procedures, other personal care services, including full body massage, 
pet grooming services, drive-in cinemas and travel agencies, tour operations, reservation service and related activities. These business establishments or activities under Category 3 in areas placed under GCQ and MGCQ shall be allowed to operate at 75% and 100% capacity starting November 1. The Department of Tourism and Department of Labor and Employment have agreed to set guidelines for the provision of cash assistance and cash for work program for tourism workers displaced due to the pandemic. Employees of accredited tourism enterprises that have retrenched its workforce or undergone temporary or permanent closure will be eligible to apply for the cash for work program. They may also avail of a one-time financial assistance equivalent to 5,000 pesos allocated through the Bayanihan to Recover as One Act. Members of duly registered community-based tourism organizations are likewise qualified to avail of the cash assistance and apply for the Cash for Work program. Meanwhile, a tour guide must be a member of a registered organization must have a valid DOT accreditation or an LGU license issued not later than August 31, 2020 and must undergo relevant training to be eligible for financial assistance. The Department of Trade and Industry is bringing the Descuento Caravan in areas affected by Super Typhoon Roli. During a cabinet meeting with President Rodrigo Duterte Monday evening, Trade Secretary Ramon Lopez said DTI eyes to hold Descuento Caravan in two to three local government units this week. Consumers in areas affected by Roli can avail of basic and prime commodities at discounted prices in the caravan. He added that DTI is partnering with the Department of Agriculture or DA to also have the Bagsakan Center in areas where Descuento caravans will be held. The trade chief also mentioned that supply of goods are generally stable in typhoon-hit areas. He reminded retailers and consumers that there is price freeze in areas placed under state of calamity. Up next, state media is said to highlight news from the provinces. And let us take a look at Panawan Island's rich marine biodiversity. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders. Tandaan ang tamang paraan ng paghuhugas at paglilinis ng kamay upang makaiwas sa iba't ibang karamdaman. Basain ng tubig ang mga kamay at sabunin. Unang sabunin ang mga palad at ang likod ng mga kamay. Kuskusin na maigi ang pagitan ng mga daliri at maging ang mga kuko. Isunod ang pagitan ng mga hinlalaki at kuskusin ng paigot ang mga dulo ng mga daliri sa magkabilang palad. Banlawang mabuti ang mga kamay sa malinis na tubig at patuyuin ang mga kamay gamit ang single-use towel o air dryer. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa. Kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at nang himpilang ito. State media is doing its best to provide better national and regional coverage of Super Typhoon Roli despite the shutdown of the country's largest TV network. Philippine Information Agency Director General Ramon Kualoping answered claims that the closure of ABS-CBN exposed information gaps in the reportage of calamities. Kualoping said state media content is now evolving to be less Metro Manila-centric and more balanced. For this, he said the PCOO has taken a whole-of-nation and a whole-of-community approach. In the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic, Kualoping said the government activated its Laging Handa platform that allowed organizations to gather and distribute news and information. 
he said the Presidential Communications Operations Office and its attached agencies, including the Philippine News Agency, contributed to the news and information gathering and distribution efforts. Kualoping said the PCOO has also partnered with private media through the Kapisana ng mga broadcaster ng Pilipinas or KBP. The aggressive community testing in Baguio City and six Benguet towns has yielded 257 positive COVID-19 cases in four days. The testing was conducted jointly by the National Interagency Task Force Against COVID-19, Basis Conversion and Development Authority, ACT CIS Party List, and the local government units of Baguio, La Trinidad, Itogon, Tuba, Tublay, and Kapangan from October 27 to 30. After the marathon testing, the town of Itogon in Benguet again logged a total of 159 cases on Sunday, a record high in a single day. 149 of the total cases involved employees of the mining company Benguet Corporation, plus their close contacts, which include family members and neighbors. Baguio Mayor Benjamin Magalong said the surge in cases show the government is able to identify the possible carriers of the virus who are eventually tested and isolated. Northern Samar pledges aid for Bicolanos affected by Super Typhoon Roli. Meanwhile, a bishop calls for donations and prayers for the victims of the typhoon. More on these from Marita Moai. The Northern Samar Provincial Government will be sending aid to areas ravaged by Super Typhoon Roli in the Bicol region. Provincial Information Officer Alan Berbon said food supply, water, clothing and other essential needs of typhoon victims will be sent to the provinces of Catanduanes and Albay. The Northern Samar Electric Cooperative will also send a team to help in the immediate restoration of power of affected communities. The local government asked Northern Summer residents to extend assistance and donation to typhoon victims. Meanwhile, two fishermen suffered burns after being hit by lightning in Zamboanga del Sur amid the inclement weather brought by Typhoon Rolly last Saturday. Victims Jamila Kai Sala and Eddie Mohale were fishing off the coast of Barangay Salawagan, Dimataling, Zamboanga del Sur when a lightning struck their banka. Several residents rushed the two fishermen to the rural health unit of Pitogo Town, Zamboanga del Sur and were later transferred to Margos Atubig Regional Hospital. In Nueva Ecija, Bishop Sofronio Bangkud of the Diocese of Cabanatuan encouraged the faithful to take part in helping people heavily affected by Typhoon Roli to recover from the devastation. The bishop called on the people to share material and spiritual support to the victims. The Alay Kapwa Social Action Office is open to facilitate the receiving and giving of donations. Proceeds will be immediately sent by the office of the Alay Kapwa to the needy dioceses in the Biko and Southern Tagalog. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Marita Muahe. In our four news, the death toll from last week's powerful earthquake in Turkey's Aegean region has risen to 98. The Disaster and Emergency Management Authority reports that total number of 147 people are currently being treated at medical facilities. 994 people were injured, with 847 of them discharged from hospitals. Turkish Health Minister Fahrettin Koka said 12 of those receiving treatment were in intensive care, while five others were in critical condition. Last Friday, a magnitude 6.6 .6 earthquake rattled Izmir, Turkey's third largest city, with a population of around 4.37 million. Environmental group Oceana praised the rich marine biodiversity in Panaon Island in southern Leyte. Oceana is on a 22-day expedition on board the expedition ship MV Discovery Palawan to help protect and sustainably manage the island's underwater resources. The group has found a myriad of healthy and colorful corals, sponges, and other marine organisms at the reefs off Panaon Island. Danny Ocampo, Oceana's senior campaign manager, said, the corals in Panaon Island are extensive and quite good compared to other dive sites he has been to. Among the marine species seen are octopus, black tip sharks, batfishes, 
eel, sea turtles, sea snakes, large chevron barracudas, giant trevallis, and big red snappers, among others. Panaon Island is a small island lying south of Leyte, separated from Dinaga to the east and Mindanao to the southeast by Surigao Strait. And here's another look at today's biggest stories. Navy ships and Air Force planes are being utilized to deliver relief aid in typhoon-hit provinces. Makabayan bloc skipped today's Senate hearing on red-tagging issue. Cash for Work program is set for tourism workers and tour guides. And let us take a look at Panawan Island's rich marine biodiversity. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. To check more news content, visit our webpage or head on to the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attach agencies. Also, watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, I am William Theo. Good day. Stay safe, everyone.